To see 16-year-old Justin Page today, one would never suspect that seven years ago, he suffered a freak injury that propelled him into the spotlight. This is News 30 at 5. You're watching Fox 2 News tonight at 10. This is News Channel 4 at 6. An Overland Park family finds out the hard way Dalmatians don't always make the best family pets. Nine-year-old Justin Page lost half of his ear when he was attacked by a Dalmatian. It was a holiday, and we were visiting Hannibal, where Justin's grandmother lives, and the great-grandmother, all the relatives, live in Hannibal. And Whitney, Justin's little cousin, was out playing with Justin in the front yard. I was a dog, and I was bent over petting it, and my cousin kicked it from behind, jumped up and bit my ear. The next thing I knew, the door opened, and Whitney came in and yelled, the dog bit Justin's ear. I didn't think anything happened. I just thought that it just jumped on me and tackled me to the ground. And then when I walked inside, my aunt screamed, oh my God, his ear's bitten off. I looked and half of the ear was gone. I was in shock. <laughs> then everybody jumped up. There was mass hysteria. We ran outside. You could see just a little pink ear laying on the sidewalk. Justin's mother put the ear on ice and raced to get Justin to the nearest hospital. There, doctors quickly realized that if there was any chance of reattachment, it would have to be done by a top-level plastic surgeon. Justin was loaded back in the ambulance for a two-hour drive to the University of Missouri at Columbia. They met us at the, when we hit the emergency room doors, and they brought Justin in. Dr. Matt Concannon took the call. One might think the reattaching of an ear would be simple compared to the larger challenges of an arm or even a finger. But that is not the case. Putting an ear back on is pretty rare. The problem with an injury like that is it's not a sharp, clean cut. It's, it's more of an avulsion injury. It's torn off. The dog clamps down and then shakes his head and it's torn off. And that action, that avulsive action, really does a lot of damage to the blood vessels. And they were telling us what a delicate operation it was and there was no guarantees. I can't remember exactly what I told the parents. I think I said we have a 50-50 shot. The blood flows to the ear through hundreds of microscopic vessels. Suturing these can be virtually impossible. And for the reattachment to succeed, blood flow into the ear is only half the battle. I was able to find a way to get blood into the ear, but what I was unable to find was a vein, which is a way to get blood out. If, if we don't have blood going out, it's just going to back up and it causes the ear to die just as quickly as if we didn't have blood flow at all. The family dog did a number on little nine-year-old Justin Page of Overland Park. Now doctors hope to save Justin's ear with help from creepy little creatures. In a world where high-tech solutions are commonplace, this ancient medical remedy, the blood-sucking leech, still plays a vital role in many reattachments. On the outskirts of a tiny Welsh village, a company called Biofarm raises medical leeches to export around the world. Carl Peters helps manage the operation. It's a big thing to get over it whenever you think of leeches and uh, you always think of things that come from ponds, and uh, which they do. The leech is much more than a simple bloodsucker. As it attaches, it secretes an anesthetic so its prey feels no pain. It also administers powerful anticoagulants so that even when it's done feeding, the bite continues to bleed for hours. For a body part that is filling with blood but lacks flow away from the part, this is a perfect combination. The value of the leeches is simply to decompress the ear, take out um, the blood so new blood can come in, new nutrients can come in. And that's all they do. It's not any specifically therapeutic other than keeping that part alive while the body can go ahead and create new outflow channels, new capillaries to drain the blood itself. When they started the leeches, I didn't tell Justin that there were leeches on his ear. We would always bandage his head so he couldn't see the leeches. And one, the leech just fell off and went right down his side and he saw it crawling along and went, what's that? I said, oh, that was a leech that was sucking the blood off your, for your ear. I didn't feel anything in my ear when they did it, so it didn't bother me. 
at this time it's virtually impossible to create a machine which would administer anaesthetic, cut the perfect hole, deliver a sort of a, a whole raft of six or seven, maybe eight anticoagulants, suck away the, the congested blood and then drop off and then leave, leave the area which would bleed for about 10 or 15 hours afterwards to, to keep it alive. When the leeches were through sucking the blood, I would pick up the tweezers and then pick up the leech and dump them in the alcohol and then we'd watch them dissolve together. <laughs> That was our entertainment for the, for the that part of the day. <laughs> Justin's story filled the area news as fascination with the replant and the leeches turned him into a celebrity. Justin was great, and he was getting a ton of attention. He ate it up. Justin apparently came out of it just fine, as you see there. He's recuperating tonight at MU Children's Hospital in Columbia. Doctors say he'll regain feeling in his ear, and his hearing is okay. And seven years later, Justin suffers no ill effects from the dog attack. Justin doesn't think of himself as a, a medical miracle. He looks at it like, I got my ear back and everything is normal. People think it looks normal and I have no problem with it. Nobody asks me about it. Nobody notices it unless I tell them so. Technically, it was very challenging uh, trying to reconnect those very tiny blood vessels. I feel like it was a little bit of skill and a great deal of luck. I'm just thankful that Dr. Ken Cannon had the medical knowledge that enabled him to do the surgery and make it so successful. And I think that was a big part of Justin's recovery was the relationship between him and Dr. Ken Cannon because he just went out of his way with Justin.